Welcome to Postscript from Faithbridge Church. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the message by sitting down with the teacher of the day. Hi, I'm Lou Ann Riley and I'm Grow Group Director and I'm here with Bible teacher Duffy Robbins who just finished up a two-part series, The Story of the World. Welcome back. Right. Thank you. Good, Good to, be to back see again. you and Happy New Year. Thank you. Yeah, Always glad, fun to come glad back. Glad to have Thank you me. here and uh, the last two weeks you have brought a great overview sort of, of of the Bible and of the story and of the gospel. We talked about four parts, yeah. um, the creation, the fall, uh, redemption and restoration. Yeah looking at all of those. And so um, we have questions that fall into each one of those. We're going to talk a little bit more in okay. depth about each one of those. Yeah. Um, and we're going to start with creation and this paradox question that actually uh, came in that we want to ask about. So in the creation story, in Genesis, we see that God has made, created the earth and everything he says is it's good, it's good, it's good. But then he sees that man is alone and he says, this is not good. Mm -hmm. And so you think about this question, did God make something that's not good? Did he make a mistake? Was that yeah. his intention? Can you speak more <laughs> did into he go that? Like, did you go like, whoops, I, 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 that's I not thought really I, what I meant to do. Yeah, Let me correct that. Now that I'm seeing man unescorted <laughs> and un, uh, you know, chaperoned, I cannot let this guy can alone in the garden. <laughs> can you help us with that one? Well, I, I would say, it's a good question, uh, but I, I think it, I, I would Describe it this way, that, that, that when God said it's not good that man should be alone, he created a woman. This was not a correction. It was a completion. It would be like if, uh, if, if you know, you were painting a picture. You, you know, you look back and say, that's good, that's good, that's good, that's good. And then you go, oh, you know what, I need one more. That's, that, that's not quite there yet. It's, it's not that it's bad. It's nothing I've done is bad. But it's not quite complete until I make this last beautiful brush stroke he called Isha, which is out of man. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and so that's, that, that's kind of how I would describe it. So it's not really a correction, um, it's a completion. Mm -hmm. It's ah, this, this will be the, the master stroke to the creation. And it was women, of course. Yeah, yeah, right, <laughs> right, the mistress stroke. But, yeah. Okay, so um, if we look, we continue to look at you talk, talking about the piece on restoration mm -hmm. um, and how God is continuing to restore and recreate. And, and in this idea of um, restoration, what are we being restored to? What is our, what is the ultimate right, destiny or right. purpose of the restoration? Well, of course, um, Restoration comes from the word restore. So, you know, we're, we're basically trying, God is, is, is re, restoring or rebuilding something that was originally really, really good. And, and so what I think um, this word restoration points us to is what we're supposed to be like. Um, and what we're supposed to be like, Paul says, I believe it's in Romans 6, that we've been predestined to be conformed to the image of God's Son. We're, we're, we're being restored to what full personhood looks like, which is exactly the language Paul uses in Ephesians chapter 4. He says we are to grow into full personhood, into the image of Christ. Um, this also is one of the reasons why Paul refers to Jesus as the second Adam. It's because uh, Jesus is sort of uh, the, the firstborn of a new race. Mm a new humanity that will someday be fully restored. So just as the original Adam was, this is good, this is a, this is a great thing, but then man fell. Um, now there's a second Adam, Jesus, who did not fall, who did not say, I want it my way. He said, your will, Father, not my own. And that he was sort of the firstborn of a new humanity. Um, that Then that's our destiny, to be, a, to be called to that. To continue to move towards to, that. To grow into Christ's likeness. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, that's essentially uh, our destiny to be formed in the likeness of Christ. That's why Paul says in, Col in Colossians that Christ in you is the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. this, is, this, is, this is where we're headed. And of course, the whole idea behind destiny is it comes from the root word destination. This is where we're headed. Right. This is where we're going. It's the end game. And, and Paul says in Philippians 1, 6, and I'm confident that God who began this good work Complete. He'll get you there. That's right. Not by our not by our doing, but by His work in us. 
Awesome. So one of the questions that we um, have included for uh, small groups that you can download here as well, um, one of the questions is of the four pieces that you talked about mm -hmm. today, creation, fall, redemption, restoration, yeah. which do you feel most people are confused by or don't yeah. understand? So I'm yeah. going to ask you the same question. Which one do you think? Yeah, yeah well, I, you know, um, of course there are all of them for different reasons. I mean, actually, uh, restoration, I don't think people really think about it very much. They really, that's just kind of the forgotten piece. Um, and, uh, and, and, uh, in creation, there's a lot of discussion, you know, the science and religion, you know, do they get along and, 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 and how did creation happen? Um, but I don't think honestly that a lot of that points to, to questions that really impact my life. I mean, they, th th those uh, oftentimes I think people have those discussions uh, more sort of out there. An in interesting question intellectually, but but you know, but but where I think um, the confusion really does impact our soul is at the fall. Mm. I don't believe we have a real sense of the fall, uh, and I would say that uh, that 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 every Christian and every non-Christian, if I could, if I could say, okay, I have some required reading for every human being on the planet. Um, I would say read Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 18, because this is where Paul sort of sounds the indictment uh, of, of God against humanity, as he puts it, against all uh, unrighteousness and ungodliness. And it's also where he begins to lay out the consequences of sin. Uh, first, that, that it divided us between our Creator. So, you know, Adam hides from you know, God, and he and Eve are afraid of God. But then it also uh, begins to separate us uh, from uh, our other created uh, things. So, so you know, it, it starts to distort and mess up all kinds of other parts of the created order. Um, I think that that is, is really, really misunderstood. Um, and, and then at the very end of that chapter, I think it's verse 31 or 32, Paul says, this is all bad. This is all, these are really serious problems. And he starts to show the, the consequences. It's almost like the genealogy of sin that once you, you know, uh, ungodliness is disbelief in God. That's mm -hmm. breaching commandments one through four. And unrighteousness, excuse me, yeah, unrighteousness is a wrong relationship with God. That's commandments five to ten, uh, our, our relationship with our neighbor. So once you start to do that, everything just goes to pot. And in, then verse 31 and 32, so then there's one other problem, is that you not only do these things, you seem to approve of those who do them. So what we in our culture consider tolerance mm. is, is one step beyond committing sin. It's then actually saying that that which is sinful is not really sinful. Mm -hmm. That which God calls sinful is not really sinful, which is the original sin and the in the garden. God said, did God really say that? So, so that's where I think the confusion is. Now, the, the, the fruit of our confusion, it plays out in two ways. It plays out, first of all, in our culture at large, we completely misunderstand the gravity of our problem. Uh, I, 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 um, I went to a concert last night while I was here in the Woodlands over at the do -si do Big Barn. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when I'm here at Faith Bridge, I'll go to a concert. I love live music and and one of the songs is a, was a, a slow ballad about how we are going to make the world better, um, that we just need to love each other. And, and it, was a, it was a nice ballad, but, but empty. I mean, this, is, this has been, you know, thousands and thousands of years. There's zero evidence that we as human beings have that capacity, mm -hmm. that, that what we are more likely to do is, is, is make war. Make a mess of it. Yeah, make mm -hmm. a mess of it. So, so um, I think that's a, that's a really misunderstanding. On the other hand, the misunderstanding on the side of people like myself is that uh, I will forget how seductive and how deceptive sin can be in my own life. That, uh, that I'll, I will miss the sin in my own life in terms of being uh, mean or rude or harsh. Um, that in other words, I'm, I'm really good at spotting sin in and other people. Else. Not very good at, uh, at facing up to it in my own life. And so the, the, the deceitfulness of sin is, uh, is so deep and so rooted. David says in Psalm 19, you know, who can discern his ways? Lord, keep me from these hidden errors. And that's, that's a constant prayer. 
So I think that would be the, and, and if you don't understand the sin problem, then the redemption chapter, you don't need, you it. Don't need it, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't need to be saved because you don't think you're lost. And so that's why I think chapter two, the redemption, the redemption chapter is important, but it doesn't make sense if you don't understand fully the fall chapter. Great. That's great. That's called TMI, okay. I think. So Long. let me ask you this. We covered a lot of material in a short time. I know it. And I know so it. was there anything that you wish that you'd been able to cover more or anything that you would like to take this opportunity to sort of speak well, into? Well, I wanted more? to talk a little bit about my family and I had an awesome vacation last summer. I wanted to get to that. No, I'm just kidding. But I, <laughs> I think, uh, no, you know what I, I do, I feel like I underplayed, uh, Luann, was that this, this story of restoration that God is telling and writing and, and writing us into is not just something he wants to do in our heart. He wants to do it in our world. That, that what Jesus talked about over and over and over again was the kingdom of God. I didn't even use the phrase the kingdom of God in my message. Um, because that takes another whole, uh, you got to do more explanation mm -hmm. and kind of talk about it. But, but the, in fact, the, this, is, this is bringing all things under his feet. So that, that when I am conscientious about, about the way I, uh, about creation care, about ecology, when I'm conscientious about uh, injustices that are done, um, you know, that, 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 that is a part of my role. It's not just God saving me. God is working uh, through me to s telling a bigger story that I'm, a, he's inviting me to be a part of this huge story of us uh, helping to save a planet, to, to usher in the kingdom of God. And so uh, I, I didn't get to tell that part of the story and it's an important, beautiful part of the story that I, that I just, for lack of time, had to leave out. Mm -hmm. Well, you covered a lot, and um, I think you have given some great discussion for our grow groups, so Good. thank you for that. Yeah, and I love those grow groups. I think that's a great mm -hmm. idea. Yes. So um, thank you for coming back again. My we look pleasure. forward to seeing you again soon. Thank you. And thank you for your questions for PostScript. We will see you back here next week as Pastor Ken kicks off a new series called Breathing Room. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org forward slash postscript.